Welcome back everyone, today is the 31st of May 2013, and today is episode 5 of ZBrush Rush. Okay, as you're about to see from the uh, spin around, today we're going to do the much requested female head. Now, today's going to be a slightly longer video than the other ones, just because I wanted to slow down the process to show you guys some stuff. Um, again, this isn't a super realistic version of female head, I'm uh, still working on that, it's just a an easier version to understand the general shapes of it first. So again, like always, it starts with a polysphere, and then you sign a mesh in and then pull out um, an area for the neck with the masking tool, obviously. Try to pull out the um, shoulder length. I decided to just go where, we'll go up till where the clavicle bone ends and not do the actual shoulder muscles. I'm just separating the jawline from the uh, neck and then working again to redefine the clavicle bones and I said just work on the basic shapes of um, like almost any human female bust. I'm trying to get the portions right, the width of the neck. The hard thing about females is you want the, the muscles to be in there, but if you do them too defined, it looks strange because you know females have a a lot smaller muscle uh, fibers than males, just generally, so it's harder to see, and if it's very prominent, it doesn't look right at all. Again, as we discussed before, the uh, ears start behind the jawline, right up to where the uh, sagmatic bone or the cheekbone starts. So I'm just pulling them out, and they are slanted backwards, it's just a tiny bit, they're not straight forward. Here I'm using the uh, move tool again to draw the center of the line, the center of the head where the head eye should go. I'm just using it as a measurement tool to see how uh, wide the shoulder should be. Generally, it's about three heads. This method of sculpting is a lot like I did for the uh, male head. I did, I think, episode three of the brush brush. Taking a clay approach. I'm just um, digging out with it. Usually, I would make the actual like sculpt down to the, where the cheekbones are, and I like, do the whole skull. You can see, but I've decided not to do this this time. It worked out a lot better because this is actually the like, fourth or third uh, female sculpt head that I did, and just all of them didn't turn out right. Getting the uh, eyebrows right curved there. Here I'm using the uh, cuter mesher tool to get more polygons in the places I want by masking it off, and that's where the polygon density will be the highest, so which gives me much more definition in those areas, like the eyes and the mouth. But when I did it, I figured out that, um, or well, I found out that some, somehow the vertical, uh, vertebra vertices were pulled apart in some areas, so I had to redo the mesh a couple times. It happens in the front or the pit of the neck and the where the, um, I think the seventh vertebrae is showing, the back of the neck. So most of the sculptor uses the clay builder brush along with a little bit of uh, the Damien standard brush. Basically clay build up and move. Here I just um, define the, where the mouth should be, the general position of it. I don't actually start working on it until much later and it gives me, it's Probably the hardest part of this whole sculpt for me. That and the eyes, of course. Because it's just hard. Here I was thinking at the neck's too long, so I just mask everything off and use the move tool with the farthest transpose master um, sphere to squish it down. This approach is actually um, copied off of one of my, uh, like I guess, idols. Um, I'll link his Twitch TV account where he does like a lot of streamings about this stuff. I think it's Hazardous Art is his name. And I use a combination of watching him and Ryan Kingline's Realistic Game Characters book, which again I'll also put a link for too. It's a really good book, but it's 
it's very hard to start out with. It's like so much detail, and he just goes into the straight, just naming all the bones and everything. It's not, I wouldn't recommend it for starters at all. Again, just working on the uh, pit of the neck here, trying to establish where the collarbones are shown and where the neck muscles are. I forgot what they're called. The ones start at the back of the ear and go to the front of the neck. I'm just trying to give her a petite nose or whatever you call it. You know, just the hard part of the nose is for females is you can't have it too defined or too you know prominent, obviously, because that looks strange, like a witch. Here I was gonna add in the breast, but I decided to just skip out to the very end. I do use the um, trim dynamic brush a lot just to smooth off some areas. Just and also it helps to um, distinct or to define plane changes a lot easier than the smooth brush does. I find this is a really good exercise. I'll be doing a lot more of the female faces in this fashion. And then again, try to make it uh, more realistic. Because while this is a good start, this isn't anywhere close to what an actual female would look like. Maybe a, like a game character, but not a, like an actual sculpt. Or a portrait sculpt, I should say. And I'm just again still working on the uh, mouth. I don't actually get a uh, final piece for it or the final feel for it for a very long time. I'm just kind of messing around with it a lot. Don't know if I want an open mouth or a closed mouth. Well, it wouldn't have a completely open, but like, you know, maybe some teeth showing. I uh, first start to work in the eyes. I think here I'm just gonna make like a general shape or uh, yeah, I don't actually go into making the actual eyelids until quite a while into the sculpt. Just trimming and making everything down here. I start on the ear, but it's one of the final things I do. I just wanted to make the general shape of it. You know this gave me a pretty hard problem as well, or a pretty big problem I should say. If anyone has any questions about the um, mud caps I'm using or the materials, they are from again ZBrush Bros uh, or ZBros mud cap selection. You can download them from his portfolio website or even from his YouTube channel. Actually, I believe the interface I'm using here is also his for um, left-handed people. I really like it. You know, all the tools I need on the left there, and I can also extend the left uh, bar to show up my tools. Here I'm just working on the indent where the uh, upper lips are which goes into the nose. 
right now. No, I don't know what they call them. So here I had a good um, size to the mouth. The mouth, the corners of the mouth should line to the about, about the middle of the eyes. But again, I don't use this as a final shape. I'm just making a more natural divide between the the head and the neck. You don't want to have it too sharp as to believe that there's actually no fat on her because you know it's a human. But you don't want to have it. So much it looks like she has an extra chin or something. Somebody wants a double chin. Especially if you're a female. A lot of switching between the uh, lower subdivision levels to get that general shape of it and then switching, uh, dividing up to get the actual tertiary details not you know you don't want the you don't want to set the planes and, and the height uh, polygon subdivision levels because it's a lot harder to get a more natural uh, curve to everything so that says always work on the lowest you can and then work your way up man this mouth was uh, such a battle it took forever I think I mostly used um, clay buildup, clay, and trim dynamic here. Well, again, as long as move and move topology, which is nice for. Uh... Oh, let me talk about this for a second. I was when I sculpted the skull, I was wrong to say that the or to show that the zygomatic bone goes to the middle of the ear. It actually goes to the top. So in a female face, it's more pronounced. Where there's actually a line from the top of the ear that goes down to about a mouth, which is not. It's like the um, defines the cheekbone, I should say. Which a female looks wrong with that. Well, no, it doesn't look wrong, but if you want to have a more feminine feature, just pronounce that a little bit. I'm using the uh, Move Topology brush, which is a lot of move brush, except it only moves the. Like if you move the bottom of the lip, it's not going to move the top of the lip with it unless you have a massive. Uh... Oh, my God, I'm blanking. Massive selection on both of them. There you go. So it's good for moving individual things, especially when you get to the eyes, like if you want to move the bottom of the eyelid, but not the top of it. You can mask it all off, or you can use the um, move topology brush. It helps a lot, especially in the lower subdivision levels, if you want to like average out the surface detail, I should say, with the amount of polygons it will have in the upper levels. Here I again think the neck is too long, so I try to uh, mask it off and I'm just going to squish it down a little bit. But after that, I have to redefine almost the planes of the face, or I mean the neck, because I've squished everything down and lost the uh, proportions in detail. Just trying to make the general shape of the um, the chest or the sternum. Here I'm defining the eyebrows a little bit, but I, I don't think I, st I keep them like this. It's just a, a quick placement of where they are.
And remember again that um, your eyeball should be the shape where three of them should line up, one in each eye and the one in the middle. So the width of an eyeball is about the same as three of them, you know, if you could fit one in between your two eyes. This is a really hard section. This is using the clay dynamic or the clay builder brush to dig out some uh, eyelids from the bulge at the beginning there. This took me quite a while, and I believe I almost followed um, hazardous, art, hazardous Arts example exactly here. But we got different results, obviously, because he's a professional. <laughs> A lot of um, move topology, trim dynamic, and not trim dynamic, but a uh, standard brush and clay builder brush, along with some um, trim dynamic brush, I would say, to get the planes correctly. Yeah, just to uh, take a break, I just put a um, another sphere on top of the head to just work out some general shapes for the uh, hair. It's just if you get frustrated on a, a certain thing like the eyes, it's just it's good to take a little break and just sculpt something completely nonsense. But I think I ended up liking this. No, no, no. This is a strange haircut. That's right. It's almost like a buttercup from the Powerpuff Girls. I don't know what I, I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe more of like a. I think no. I don't think the Wendy's girls like this. But um, to do the hair, I just used a lot of um, clay builder brush and no clay, clay tubes brush and trim dynamic. The clay tubes brush is a great way to uh, just get like a lot of volume really quickly. This is more of the final haircut you see. Sorry I'm not talking much, I'm just, uh, there's not much to really say, I mean, it's hard to explain it all. But if you guys have any other suggestions, just, uh, feel free to comment, you know. Because this is, this is, was suggested by me by a, uh, I forgot the name, I think it was on the very first video I did. So it did take a while to respond, but... There it is. I'm just trying to find the uh, eyelid and the kind of eye fat that goes in your eyebrow. It kind of folds down. <laughs> Again, the older you are, the more prominent it is. But it's like a Pretty big female trait, I'd say, or I have more of like a softer looking eyes. And again, this is a trim dynamic to make it all into a nice, smooth plane. Because if you smooth it, it just collapse the whole thing. Around this time, the actual scope was starting to come together a lot more, so I started feeling a lot better about it. Which is a good thing. Masking off the area where the uh, uh, fat would be again. Or it's not a lot of fat, it's just some of the padding around the eye, I should say. It'd be more nice here. <laughs> Usually I only sculpt with one eye in, so I can, um, if I need to like move the eye without 
and I get behind it I can use use the left eye or the left eye hole and I can just see what happens to the right eye which is strange but it helps a lot it's, it's, I'd say that you want especially when you want to move the corners of the eyes Remember that the uh, corners, of the outside corners of the eye should be a little bit higher than the inside corners. Unless you're super old. Him is trying to define the lower eyelid more. Because while well, the top one is a lot dominant or more dominant, I still want the bottom one to come out from the face and not be sunken in. Adding some, uh, not eye bag, Julie, really, but more of a um, distinguishing or trying to distinguish the difference between the cheekbone and the eye socket. The lesson that I learned with the eyes here is just it takes a long time, so if you get frustrated, don't just, you know, mess it up or try again, just keep going at it. If you have to, just, you know, Sculpt some quick hair or something to get your mind off it. But you're gonna have to tackle it eventually. And it's quite hard. Let me just define the nose a little bit more. Trying to add some uh, width or I think thickness to the eyelids here by just going over it with the clay brush. A nice way to dig into the inside of the eyelids is by using the Damien Sander brush. To just like if you use it on the corners, it'll actually dig in instead of like pushing your whole sculpt in like a, a standard brush will do. For some reason here, the left and the right eye I guess are spaced differently. I'm not even sure what happened there, so I had to fix the right eye by itself. Got to make sure that the female head is really round. A uh, male's head on top of the forehead is actually kind of chamfered back a little bit, almost like a primate's head. But a female's is always more round, especially the forehead, from a side portfolio. Also, I wanted to apologize for this video being like the only video in the past like two weeks. You know, I've been doing a lot of um, summer school to get my final my final college out credit hours, so I could uh, transfer to college. So I've spent a lot of uh, work doing that, and then actually, you know, going to work. So I haven't had much time to sculpt, let alone up uh, edit and upload a video, which takes quite a while. Not just the actual editing it, but the exporting it from ZBrush to movie file. Usually I just leave it on overnight and go to bed. <laughs> I'm just defining the cheekbones a little more. It, you, can, you can clearly easily go over it and have two defined cheekbones, but then it looks like Cruella de Vil or Michael Jackson or something. Or Cruella de Vil, yeah, whatever. I think I said that wrong. This is a really important part, making the uh, with the fat that hangs from the nose to the cheekbones. I forgot what it's called, but Ryan Kinklin 
had a really good quote in his book. It talks about like this is the most one of the most important features of a female face. I wish you could find where it's called. What it's called? Oh, it's called the frontal process of maxilla. And that's basically a fancy way of saying nose, cheekbone, fat. But it's important, nonetheless. They got such crazy names. Went a little more anatomy. There, I'm just defining the uh, jawline. You can easily go over it and make it too defined. Um, a female's jawline is more round compared to a male's, but I'm sure you probably knew that. Male's is more boxy and sharp. Well, like a superhero, you know, like a regular guy, or like a you know a fat guy, you wouldn't even be able to see it. I have a sneaking suspicion after those pencil beards are for to like define the cheek, uh, their jawline. Like, hey, look, this is my jawline. No, I should line the hair. We won't get into that now. But this stage is pretty, um, I think it's like the third or fourth subdivision level. So I don't go in, like, I don't try to add shapes too much, just defining them. The, I messed up a lot in the mouth here, so I have to scale down again some division levels to work out the general shapes of it. I'm just trying to work out the plane between the nose and the, I guess, the whole side of the face. You want to have a nice smooth transition. Because there's one thing about the female face, it's not really, you don't want any like crevices or stuff like that, you know, you want it all to be smooth and well-rounded. Unless it's like a older, you know, female. Like a younger to, to mid-20 or before 20 is like super round and, you know, the rounder it is the more young it looks. Which I guess is why they get that, you know, Botox and they get the face pulled back it's weird. I mean you can do that, I'm not against it, I'm just I think it's working on the ears here. Let's change subjects. I just had to destroy the whole bottom lip and try it again. I believe this was the last time, I'm hoping. I wanted to add more voluptuous lips, I should say. Or just fat lips. Whatever you want to call it. I'm using the uh, move uh, topology brush to just make more of a uh, e an even surface. Uh, what do you call it? You want to have all the squares of the polygons roughly the same size at the low levels when it upgrades or divides it. They all look the same. So if you go back and you move each vertice one by one with the uh, move topology brush, when you divide it back up, it'll have a lot more detail in that area. But at the risk of just destroying the form you had, so you gotta be careful what you do there. Just scaling down the uh, bottom loop a little bit and rotating it downward. Remember that the top lip is more prominent, yeah, that's it, or dominant, whichever one you want to say.
these lips, man. Ah, it took so long. I just need to just sculpt a bunch of lips. Maybe I'll do that. Just like on a sphere or a, a cube. To practice and to demonstrate it more. But if I could turn it out right, they're not like amazing, you know? They're just adequate. You want to be careful with having two, um, with the cheeks, or the, like I said, the maxilla, um, folds over the, where the mouth goes, by the corners of the nose. The more prominent that is, the older the, the, you know, the people look. So it would be strange if you had, like, super defined mouth crease, whatever you want to call it, and everything else is young about her. You want to have more of, like, a, a general shape, follow, a general age, following your whole sculpt. Like super, you don't want to like have super old like eyes or something, you know, and have everything else look young. Wouldn't make sense. Unless maybe like a monster. I don't know. It's working on the ears, getting that um, hook shape of the top part of the ear. For this, I used a really good website called Sculptor or like I think it's Artist or Sculptor stuff for artists. I'll link it in the description. It's, it's an amazing website. Like a whole bunch of references. You can click on the proportions of the face, the bones of the face, the secret planes of the face, or anything really. I believe they're also, they had a Kickstarter a while ago to have the actual website move to a free, or I don't know if it's going to be free, but a phone and a iOS and a Android app for it. Should be good. Have a desk, you know. Quick, quick access. But, you know, you already have the computer, so. Using these Damien, Damien Sander brushes, dig in there to define the difference between the outer layer of the or the outer rim of the ear. It's a long video, isn't it? If you're still here, I'm impressed, thoroughly impressed. You know, I don't think people would sit here for 30 minutes and watch something nowadays. But hey, if you're serious. Anyway, here I'm just using the clay brush to make the lips more round. From the inside, of course. Because they were too flat. It's almost like a final pass, just getting everything, all the final shapes done. I think I actually changed, no, no. No, I was going to say that you can change the alpha of the um, clay builder brush to a round shape, to give it more of an organic feel, but I don't think I did that here. More than the whole sculpt, actually. Sounds from the final pieces of the eye. Lids, eyelids. You know, it's good to move around the sculpt and just work on what you see. You, know, you don't want to stay on one piece too long. For this sculpt, you know, I shouldn't be saying that because that's mainly what I do here, like when I focus on the eyes or the ears or even the mouth. But I didn't work on them to completion, you know, I just worked on them to that sub, uh, to the like, max I could get out of that um, subdivision level and moved on. Here I made the eyebrows way too prominent <laughs> with, uh, I don't know what brush I used, but then I used the, the, the uh, what's it called? Damn standard brush? No, that's not it. Yeah, the trim dynamic brush to smooth them over, to make them to like a flat square, which I don't like, so I had to round them up again. But we're past that now. Okay, so let's go to the... The front, him just doing the final pass on the uh, hair. I decided to like it, so just quickly do it. It's not like amazing hair. I did do some um, 
fiber mesh examples of the hair, but yeah, I don't think it worked too well. So, using the tubes, clay tubes, uh, clay buildup, and the clay brush, along with the um, trim, trim dynamic brush, just give a quick representation of the hair. It's not perfect by any means. It looks almost like plastic at the end, but it gets its shape down. You know, implies hair. There's a really good um, fruit tutorial that was just released by ZBrush Workshops about sculpting realistic hair. And I watched that after I sculpted it, so the next hair, or the next hair in my next model, should look really good. Or a lot better than this one, I should say. It's actually just a, an eyelash, like quick OBJ that you can make like any program you really want. I think it's just, yeah, it's just a, uh, start off with a rectangle and just pull out some really basic shapes, made it round at the edge, and imported it. Adding some color on the eyes. I know I skipped most of the, uh, the poly paint, but that's because the actual Filming of it was corrupted, so that sucks. I'm just adding some, uh, freckles. A little bit too, you know, go overboard a little bit, but I, I tone it down at the end. I should have made a uh, separate layer, so you just experiment without having to re undo the whole time. Anyway, there's the final one. Um, thanks you guys for watching. Please subscribe if you want more weekly episodes. Hopefully the weekly episodes. If I have more time, I'll do more of them. Um, comment if you have any questions or any suggestions. Blah, 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 this and that. Thanks for watching.